everybody, this is Bob Cathy, Team Run Smart Pro, and today we're going to put brakes on the steer axle. So much easier than drum brakes, it just blows me away why somebody hasn't come up with this years and years and years ago. So here it is. When you get a, a brake kit, it comes with pads, these springs, this bar, the pin, the, the washer, and the keeper. Super simple to change. So the first thing you do is you got to pull this keeper out of this pin. Get a pair of pliers, pull it out. That comes new in the kit, so you can throw it away. Again, a flat washer, throw it away. Get your little pry bar. Pry down on the pry bar. Why are you prying down on the pry bar? This is all spring-loaded here to keep the brakes from chattering. All right. Pull the pin out. That, again, comes with the kit. This bar comes with the kit, all brand new. So then you can see that the pads are loose. But before we start really getting into it, we wanna inspect these boots. These are like a silicone rubber boot. And that is one thing we really need to make sure there's no holes in there because if, if stuff gets in there, it's gonna lock everything up and you'll have issues. Okay, so the next thing, you take a 10 millimeter ratchet or socket, and there's a little cap right here. You gotta pull that cap off, and that exposes. Do we get a new cap, or you gotta save that one? It'll come with a new cap. It also comes with this, and this is a shear. So inside here, there's, there's a chain that runs these pistons. And every time the brake works, it adjusts the brake up. That's the automatic adjuster part of it. So if you turn this the wrong direction and break that chain, you're gonna put a whole new caliper on and that gets real expensive. So they put this shear on here, super simple, and I have broke them. And so I, I just turned it the wrong way, and now the brake pads are tight. So, and you want to turn it gently, because it does shear relatively easy. So when I turned it that way, it, it everything got tight. So now, you can hear a click. That's okay. Good, when it clicked, I was wondering how much that was gonna cost us. <laughs> so as you can see, Oh, they're, they're get, everything's getting looser and you want to oh, yeah these both these pistons are moving at the same rate of speed because of that chain that runs everything get this back clear off and that also gives you an idea of about how much wear the brake pads have have worn okay it got to a to a point where it was I could, I could feel that it was gonna be harder than that click, so I stopped so I didn't shear that thing off. So now the brake pads are loose. They just lift right out, so simple. But if you look right here, they're, 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 they got a groove cut in them. That, if they wear to that point, that's when that's the maximum life out of these brake pads. So you can see, you still got a look. It looks to me like we still got a lot. So, in automotive world, this is about the thickness of a new brake pad. And I forgot to bring the new brake pads. Where are they? They're in the shop. So we have basically the same. I think that's um, two millimeters or five millimeters. About the thickness of a nickel is what you can actually wear the pads down to. Once you get the pads out, you need to make sure that the so there's more boots right here, down in there. One on both sides. So there's oh, a there's a pin that goes through here that the caliper slides on, and that you have those boots to keep that stuff from getting in on those pins and locking up the road. But the caliper slides real nice and easy. That's what we want. So I'll go grab the new brake pads and the rest of the kit. You might notice when Bob was uh, talking, he has a little ding on by his eye, and he was using the pry bar, and it slipped. And 
he gave himself a heck of a deal. Okay, so this is this is half the kit. I already put the upside on, and here's the rubber cap, the one that we took off. But it also it comes with two different sizes. It comes with two of the little ones and two of the big ones. So you have to figure out which ones fit your particular piece of equipment. And it comes with the new shears. When I was working on the other side, I went the wrong way, sheared one off. So here's the new, here's the extra new one. And you want to save these. If you don't shear them off, save them because you may need them some other time. And can you compare the new brick to the old brick? Yeah. So here's here's the new one, and you can see the, the thickness there. And, and here's, how how many miles are on our old one? Five hundred thousand miles. So so we're over over halfway. And about how much did a brake kit cost? Do you remember? Uh, two hundred and ten dollars at our local Freightliner. What would that compare to drum? Not to. Um, most drum brake the shoes and kits are one hundred and seventy nine dollars per wheel. And this was two two hundred ten dollars for per, for an axle. So. You know, to get the life that you get out of them. I mean, we could have easily gone another 250,000 miles, I think. So why are we changing them? Just so the new owner has better. Yeah, so they've got good. Nothing, to, nothing to worry about for a while. Yeah. So you got to put these spring things on, which. Are they on the old spring? Oh yeah, they're the, yeah. They're so, on, like, yeah, you can Texas. see them right here. Yeah, Texas. So you just got to push it until it snaps down then that one's on <laughs> you just slip them in <laughs> oh my gosh you know compared with, to how doing drum brakes with, with drum brakes you know you got the pins and the bushings and, oh and the those little roller bearing thingies what are those little that you had to put the funny the, uh, the roll, wire the rollers wire. that go yeah, on the rollers that go on the yeah, slack always, adjuster Texas, get back. That is so simple. Bob, you and I could have changed brakes a lot for the old days if we'd had these. Well, that's what I said when I when I changed my first set of disc brakes on a truck. It's like, oh my God, why didn't we have these 25 years ago? Would have been made my life so much easier. Of course, again, yeah, I need your again. comes with new parts or all, all the new, all the new hardware. Just you know, they they think of everything with with these. Even even the keeper and the flat washer. So we get our pry bar. Be careful with the pry bar. Yep. You don't need to do the other, right? <laughs> <laughs> I have seen Bob about knock himself out once or twice. So oh, push the pan in to where it's up against the, the retainer. Take the flat washer, slide it on so it's up next to the retainer. Then you take the little keeper, it snaps in, it's not going anywhere. You don't put silicone on it this time? No. At the factory put silicone around this just, I suppose, just to make sure it stays, but you know, it's a spring loaded thing. And then you have to twist it back, right? I'm, I'm going to twist it back just because if something should happen and the keeper come loose, it's not going to come all the way out if it can, if it gets up against the, the caliper here. Yeah. So you can see we still have way too much slack. So how do you know how to adjust the brakes back up? So I watched <laughs> Bendix has some really good training on these. And that's how I... You'll notice that is a Bendix. Yeah, Bendix brakes. So you adjust it until you can't turn it anymore, and you. But you don't want it tight. It it's tight. Uh -huh. You can it'll still turn, but. Could you you could shear that off again? Yeah, if you're not careful, you can shear that off. Okay, right now it's it's pretty hard to turn, so so that's fine. So then you go back into reverse mode. Two clicks. 
That's what Bendix wants. Allows the rotor to turn free. Got a little bit of slack with the caliper. Take your, your cap. Make sure your uh, shear is, is still on there. Snap the cap on. And I like to twist it in the groove to make sure it's seated properly. And now we're ready to put the wheel back on. That is so much simpler than drum brakes. I like to have had these 25 years ago when I was a mechanic. I would like to have, have those too. But that's basically all there is to it. Put the wheel back on, torque to proper specs in the proper order. I, did you number these? I noticed you numbered the other ones. Yeah, I, and I, I didn't number in the proper order. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And I did that because when you go to a truck stop and get tires changed, they never go in order. They always just start here and go around. And they always, they like to run them up with an impact and then torque them. And the torque wrench is always, I've never seen them turn a nut past what the impact did, which tells me they're over torqued. So when I put a wheel on, I start at 50 pounds, I go to 150 pounds, go to 300 pounds, and then I, I go ahead and torque them up to the 475 pounds, but always in the order that, because this is all aluminum and you can twist aluminum. Well, you can twist cast iron as well. So what's that thing you just took off, Bob? This is a Centromatic Balancer. <laughs> I love them things. So simple, keeps your wheels in balance and everybody's happy. That's all there is to it. So if you need to do your brakes and you got your wheels off getting new tires or whatever, getting them balanced, well, rebalanced. Even if you just took them off, you could just always, I mean, that's easy to look so at and see how they're easy to inspect. Doing. Oh. You need to inspect those rubber boots fairly often. Even with the wheel on, you can see them. You can see through here yeah. on both sides. These boots, these boots. That's part of your inspection process. And again, seeing how far they're worn, it's yeah, that's amazing. pretty easy to see. So until next time, this is Bob Caffey, Team Run Smart Pro. Be safe out there.